besides sending the police, you might want to send an ambulance or a hearse. Hello, Billy Ho here. Coming at you with the first of many fantasy football draft videos. Uh, today, we're going to discuss uh, rookie running back sensation, eighth overall pick, Bijan Robinson for the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, we're going to discuss him in a PPR format. And if you are playing in any other PP or any other format other than PPR, uh, you're you're kind of outdated and doing it wrong, really. Uh, the half points in the in the uh, standard leagues are just, you know, the way of the dodo, in, in my opinion. But uh, that's for another discussion, another day. What we want to talk about today is he seems to be going really, really high in drafts. And is he worth picking in the top five? Is he worth picking in the top 10 first round? 10-man, uh, 12-man league. Uh, so what are we talking about here? So I'm going to break down the pros and the cons of taking him or just what pros and cons are of having him on your roster are going to do for you. And the Atlanta Falcons as a team, you know, as far as fantasy scoring goes. So I uh, appreciate you joining me. Please uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, smash that like button and uh, put down in the comments maybe, you know, where where you would take Bijan? Would you take him over Christian McCaffrey? Would you take him over Jonathan Taylor? Would you take him over Cooper Cup? Something like that, you know. So uh, go. Let's go ahead and get started here. Football. All right. Well, running backs are probably, as far as rookies go, the most immediate out of the gate performers. Uh, they're the most likely to succeed. Uh, starting it right out because, you know, the translation, learning the playbook, they, you know, they just learn how to run their plays. And uh, the hardest thing rookies have to learn how to do is pass block. So if they want a third down, a three down back out of B. John Robinson, he best be able to pass block in the NFL. So that that's one thing. Uh, so basically the top rookie, he was drafted eighth. Like I said, he's the highest to go since, running back Saquon Barkley, and uh, we're going to show some highlights of this perfect prototypical running back. He is 5'11". He's 215 pounds. He runs a sub 4'5", 40. He's about 4'4 and change. Uh, so he's got speed. He's got good speed. He's got good, tw good quick twitch moves, and he can catch passes, as we can see. So that's what you want in a PPR league is to be able to catch passes. So those are the pro, those are some of the pros. I'm going to bounce back and forth here. So bear with me. Uh, so he gets low on the inside and he can bounce outside and beat linebackers and ends to the edge. So he's going to be good in the red zone and he's going to be good on first and goal, you know, five yard line and in. Uh, I think he can find the end zone. Uh, I do think Atlanta will use him as a three down back. Like I said, now, some negatives are possibilities of negatives. We don't know how good Desmond Ritter is at, at quarterback. Uh, if he's not any good, you, you might be in trouble because teams are just basically like they did to Barkley, uh, a lot of his uh, growing pains, especially when they first got Daniel Jones and everything, they stacked the box. You're getting eight, eight nine in the box, uh, 10 in the box. You know, it's, it's crazy. So you don't want that. You want to, to be able to have Desmond Ritter – and some of these good wide receivers that they got, the Drake Londons of the world and uh, Pitt and all them good guys, uh, you want them to be able to stretch the field and give him some room to run. So could he catch enough balls? I think so. Uh, I, I know that traditionally, and people have said it, Pat Mayo, other people said it, that Atlanta does not throw to running backs. and But they really haven't had – a prototypical, like, all, you know, they've had a running back that can do each thing pretty good. You know, this guy can pound it between the tackles. This guy's fast and he's on the edge. But this dude can kind of do it all. Uh, and I think with Desmond Ritter, he's a new quarterback. I still think that he's going to catch, A, if they're down in games, Ritter's not going to be stretching down the field every play. They have to be able to move the ball. So he's going to be able to catch dump off passes to get those extra yards to set up second and long to get them third and short, things of that nature. I think he's going to be really good at. 
Uh, more downside is Atlanta is going to run less plays. You're looking at it right now. Uh, they have been bottom five the last two seasons in average plays per game. So they also they scored 20 or less points in six of their last eight games last year. Uh, so that that's uh, those are kind of downsides. Uh, but a, a big plus is the Falcons actually did surprise a little bit last year. They have a top 10 offensive line, uh, which is going to really, really help him. So they were actually fairly competitive for a seven and 10 team. They were in a lot of games. They just didn't, weren't able to, with Marcus Mariota, keeping them in games, they, they were pretty decent, uh, but seven and 10 is not great, but they were pretty good at home. They had a winning record at home. Uh, they were also pretty good as you're looking at now, pretty decent in red zone touchdown efficiency. So they were about middle of the pack 14th, uh, which is not too awful bad. Uh, they are, kind of in a weaker division now. You got no more Brady on the Bucks. You know, you got the Panthers trying to rebuild. Uh they've traded away CMC. You got the Saints, they're kind of trying to rebuild. So, you know, this division could be ripe for the taking for a team that can step its game up and and be uh, you know, maybe bloom a little early. Uh so I would put that between maybe the Saints and uh and and the Falcons. Uh, Panthers too, though. I mean, you never know with the Panthers. So anyway, favorable schedule. Uh, they start the season with two games at home. And to sum things up, I think I've kind of come around back around on him. Um, it's difficult for me to take him in the top five, though, overall. Uh, I, I, I don't think I'd take him over CMC. I don't think Christian McCaffrey, for those of you who don't know fantasy football, uh, abbreviations and such. You're going to hear that a lot. CMC, Christian McCaffrey, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Eckler, Austin Eckler for the Chargers, or or even Saquon Barkley, Cooper Cup. There's there's a whole bunch of guys, and I could go on. There are plus several other proven players uh, in between those, and uh, a lot of guys are, are going quarterback early. People like to grab tight end and get those Kelseys. You know things of that nature. So I mean, I would love to grab. I would love to grab a guy like Bijan in the second round, or you know, even late second round. You know, as my RB one after I maybe I get one or two. You know, if you could get him at the bottom of the second coming back up, and you already got two wide receivers or something, that would be great. But it's not going to happen. Uh, I know it's early, so uh, early in draft season, and people are gaga over the new guy. And especially if you hear any kind of news on how great he looks in camp, how explosive he looks in camp. Atlanta is not feeling buyer's remorse on him. So everything's all good. Uh, so I would say if you want to take the risk on him, I would not be mad at you, obviously, but I wouldn't recommend it. I would I would take more of a proven guy, uh, especially in the top five over, over Bijan. That's my opinion. Uh, but uh, you might have a different one, and it does depend on your your you know kind of your scoring and whatnot, and how important quarterbacks are to your leagues if you're playing in two quarterback league. So that that matters. But I just thought I'd pass this along, and it's just my opinion. And I uh, hope you like it, and I hope it helped you. So uh, subscribe, smash likes, and comments, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you for watching.